Hi everybody, Rob here. Just wanted to do a quick video to show you a new product that I've discovered. This has probably been around for a while, but I just found out about them, and it's the uh, the Fiskars Hobby Knives. Um, you can get these in various craft stores and hobby shops. Um, really, really glad that I finally broke down and bought one. Um, really enjoyed it. Went out and got a second one right away. Uh, this is how they come in a blister pack, so if you're looking for them, that, that's what they'll look like. Just a great knife. I, I think it combines all the best qualities of every other knife on the market, and they just packed, packed all the best features into one knife, and I think they really hit it out of the ballpark with, with this design. Um, just want to show it to you. Um, but before I get too far into the Fiskars, how about if I show you some of the other knives that I'm comparing uh, to it so that uh, we, we can see what I mean about uh, Fiskars taking the better features of other knives. This of course is the Exacto number one handle with the number 11 blade. Uh, probably everybody is familiar with this knife. This, this is probably the first knife that you ever go out and buy. Uh, this is my first hobby knife, uh, probably more than 40 years old. Just just a great design. It has fabulous balance. Um, it, it's not the best knife ergonomically, but uh, you know, back in the day, the real strength of it was it, it had those real high quality made in the USA X-Acto blades that, that came sharp and stayed sharp. Um, nowadays, X-Acto knives and blades are produced offshore over in Asia, and uh, they're not quite as good as they used to be. You can still buy an American-made blade like this one here. This is the uh, Z-Series blade. It's kind of, I don't know if you can make it out, it's kind of got a gold coating on the uh, edge of the blade. Uh, that's still an excellent quality blade, but you pay a little bit more for it. Um, this would be my second favorite blade. There's another one that I like even better than this, and I'll get to that one in just a moment. But uh, from the number one Exacto, I graduated up to the number two. I found that this was just a little more comfortable because it's got that bigger handle. It uh, takes more or less the same style of blade. I don't know what uh, number Exacto gives to these larger ones, but uh, uh, essentially it's just an upscaled number 11 blade. Great knife. It, it, uh, it shares all the good features of an Exacto. It's got that great balance. A little more comfortable to hang on to, I find. Uh, but I am running out of these blades, these larger number 11 style blades. Uh, uh, th this is just about the last of my American made uh, blades and I don't know what I'll do once I run out of those. Uh, here's a Chinese knockoff of the number two. Essentially the same thing exactly, the same balance, everything else, just a little bit cheaper. Um, this is probably why Exacto started uh, producing their products offshore to compete against knockoffs like that. Here's another clone of, uh, of a style of X-Acto knife. This is uh, made by Excel. This, this is a nice knife. It, uh, it, it is a little more comfortable to hang on to. It's got this rubber coating on the shaft, which I really, really like. But the problem I find with this is that they, they put the tightening mechanism here for the, the collet. Uh, it's right here at the back of the handle and it just throws the balance off. So I haven't really enjoyed using this knife as much as uh, some of the Exactos. I thought I had found the perfect knife oh, last year sometime when I switched over to using these Olfas. Uh, this is a great knife. I absolutely love these too. Um, they have really comfortable rubber grip here. The collet is excellent. I I think you can put an X-Acto blade in there, uh, but I prefer the Olfa blades. I think Olfa makes an even nicer blade than X-Acto does. These are made in Japan. They are super, super sharp. Uh, you got to be careful with these things. And they keep, they keep their edge for a long, long time. They're just a wonderful blade. Uh, everything about this knife is, is great, with the one exception of the balance. I just find that it, it's a little unbalanced. It's got such a long handle here. I, I just wonder if maybe they didn't shorten that handle by a couple of centimeters. It might be a little handier knife to use. Um, one feature that I, I think is just killer on this knife is this little tab that they put back here. That's, that's there to keep the knife from rolling away. 
you know you, you can roll it but it uh, that tab interferes with with the motion and it uh, it doesn't go far just uh, a well thought out knife great blades uh, not too much more to say about that one I was really gratified when I when I picked up this Fisker and found out that you can put Olfa blades in it too. It'll take an X-Acto blade or an Olfa blade. It, it takes them both equally well, um, giving you the best of all worlds, I think. Uh, really nice chunky handle. It's got great balance. Uh, nice rubber grip to hold on to here. It's dimpled so that, uh, you know, it just, just gives you a better purchase on the knife. Um, everything about it is great. It, it doesn't have, unfortunately, anything to keep it from rolling away. So that would be nice. I guess if you were to maybe mention one thing that they could improve, that would be it. Uh, be nice if they had something on here to keep it from rolling. But uh, other than that, I, I would say this knife has, has it all. I'd give this a solid 9.5 out of 10. If, if it had a tab on there like the Olfa does to keep it from rolling... I would definitely give this knife a 10. Yeah, really, really nice knife. Um, the blade that comes with it is not too bad. It's probably a little bit better than the standard X-Acto uh, blade. But uh, pretty much as soon as I got my knife, I, I took out the blade that came with it and switched it over to an Olfa. Uh, wonderful uh, combination, the Fisker's knife and the Olfa blades. Um, not too much more to say about it. Um, you know, it is a made in China product, but uh, boy, they, they did it well. Uh, Fisker's, uh, Fisker's has uh, really found themselves a great manufacturer over there, obviously, who can do a decent job of putting a knife together. Um, and that's about it. Um, Fisker's hobby knife definitely gets two thumbs up from me. I recommend that uh, people at least take a look at it and, uh, you know, maybe run out and grab one for yourself. It is a great knife. And it is well worth the money. Um, believe I got mine for, what, $15, something like that. It, it wasn't much. Uh, a bargain, I would say. Anyway, there you go. That's my review of the Fisker's Heavy Duty Hobby Knife.